Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of Toothpicks. Hey, it's cold outside a little bit, and it's the perfect time to do a pot roast. But guess what? We're going to do it on a smoker. So I think you're going to enjoy this, so stay tuned. So it's time to get this pit lit. We got some wood right here supplied by Lone Star Firewood here locally. Got a little cherry wood, got a little oak. We got some DB charcoal briquettes we're gonna be using today, filled up in about half a chimney of charcoal. That's all you need. We're gonna be pouring over this other charcoal right here. That's about the full chimney right there. We're gonna get it lit up here in a minute with the loof lighter. Let that flame come up, and we're gonna go inside while that's getting lit up, and we're gonna get this meat seasoned. All right, guys, so we're back inside. Let me show you what we're working with today. I got a prime chuck roast I picked up from my local HEB today. This is going to be some good stuff. Just look at that marbling right there. I can't wait to put that right there on the smoker. It's going to be so good. Let's look to our left. Let's see what we got over here, what we'll be using for seasonings. I got the Holy Gospel Meat Church Barbecue Rub, the Heath Riles Garlic Butter. That's some good stuff. Just started using that. Salt, pepper, garlic. Your basic seasoning that everybody should have in your cabinet. Some red wine blend. Olive oil, because you got to have that olive oil so to make that rub bind right there. It'll give you a good crisp bark on there. And let's look to the right. We got your standard things. You can put whatever you want in there. Onion. We got mushrooms. We got a couple of garlic cloves. Carrots. Celery. About two or three russet potatoes. And, I mean, that's going to work out just for me, I think. I think that's going to be good. We're going to look at the top. Let's see, you're going to have to have a good Dutch oven um, right there. I don't remember what brand it was, but it's not a Lodge. But it's real good when I've had it for years. Some better than Bouillon. I love this stuff. About four teaspoons, about four cups of water will do. we got to get that mixed up real good. We're going to use that. The brace, that's for our braising liquid when we put the meat inside the pot. And that's going to make it break down and cook real tender. First order of business. You got to have your hands washed. Or you can use gloves if you want to, but I'm in my own home. My hands are washed, they're clean. That's going to work out just fine. We're going to be putting a little olive oil on this in a minute. Get this ready to put this rub on so it can bind. So take your olive oil, get it all over this piece of meat. Don't worry about it. Just rub it all in. You'll know how much is enough when you put that on there. Rub it all on all sides of the meat. Get it turned over. Rub it on the other side. Put a little more if you need. I'm just going to add a little more right here. You know, I, sometimes I get a little too happy with it. Get it all in the little crevices right there. You can put some um, binding uh, wine or uh, cooking twine on here if you want. If you want to keep it together, thinking about it, it's going to pull apart. It's going to pull apart in the um, pot anyway. Let's get some um, salt, pepper, garlic on here. Get that put all over it. Don't worry about you not putting enough. Get it on there. It's not going to hurt. It's a thick piece of meat. So don't worry about, oh, man, it's going to be too salty. It's not. This is going to help season some of that braising liquid. Also, once you put it inside the Dutch oven, get it on this side. I'm going to hit this all on the sides right here. I'm trying to get it all in the cracks so it can, you know, that seasons get all in there. It's going to taste good. The saltiness, the garlic, the pepper taste. And the next thing, um, after we finish putting a little rub on here, we're going to set this down, and I'm going to be getting some of that Heat Riles garlic butter. I like this stuff, guys. I've been using it for a little while now. It's got a little jalapeno hint in it, and we're going to get this put on there. Had a little problem with the top. <laughs> Heat Riles. Um, good stuff. Got it um, here at the Meat Church Barbecue, barbecue Supply here in Wasahatchee. Get that all over the, the meat the same way you did the salt, pepper, and garlic. That's going to be some good stuff. Y'all got to get this inside your spice cabinet if you get a chance put it add it to the collection add it to your rubs it's some good stuff i love that thing i use it on vegetables i use it on meat next we're going to get this holy gospel barbecue rub i've been using this for a long time i believe in this stuff it's good it's a good all-purpose rub get it on there and i know you're thinking man that's a lot of rub and you're mixing all kind of flavors but man i love seasoning i love taste of flavors you know 
melding together. Nothing's going to hurt it. I mean, do this how you want to. Figure out the own rubs. You don't have to use these rubs right here. You can use whatever you want on this chuck roast. Figure it out. That's the beauty about barbecue. You can do whatever you want. So right there, I got thrown on there. We're going to be letting this sit right here. I kind of like want to get the rest of the season there. Don't waste anything. Get as much as you can out and let that sit on the cabinet right here. And we're going to get our hands washed up and go outside. And the fire should be ready. And we're going to be ready to go in a minute. All right, guys. So we're outside. And I think this charcoal is ready to go. We're going to get this thing picked up. And, you know, you want to be careful doing this. Got sparks going everywhere. You want to burn down nothing. But you want to pour this all on one side, all on the top where the charcoal is. And this is really called what you call the minion method. Some people call it or banking um, the charcoal to one side. That way you can smoke your meat on the opposite side. I want those charcoals that are hot on the top because we're going to be searing that meat right on top of those before we start smoking it. And then I'll adjust my vents how I want to when I'm ready to do that part. We're going to get our grate put back on so we can heat up that rack. That way I place my meat on it and it's ready. And then while that's heating up, we're going to go back inside. We're going to get this meat. I think we're ready for the next step. All right, guys. So we got this chuck roast right here ready to go. It's ready to get seared up. Coals are hot. They're ready. And they better be ready because this chuck roast is going on. Take your meat hook right here and you pop that in the thickest part that you find on the meat get that picked up and i'm going to put that right there over those hot coals so we can get a good sear action going on i'm gonna leave it on about 10 minutes put the lid on and then we're going to come back out you can leave it as long as you want as long as you get the sear you like and we should be getting ready to flip it now that the chuck roast is seared the way i like it because you know i checked it a little bit on the bottom i'm gonna get this flipped over just like that with this little meat hook i got here you can use tongs if you want you can use black gloves with you know insulating gloves inside there whatever you want to do just get it flipped over and i'm gonna leave that on there another 10 15 maybe 20 minutes to get the sear i want on the other side and that's what i call flavor guys it's getting good and it's going to be good for braising and we're going to get this lid put on and i'm going to bring this up just the way i had it Come back out here. Now it's ready to go. Check the bottom. Man, that looks good. I think it's ready to move to the other side. And all you have to do, guys, is take the end of this right here, your meat hook or whatever you want to do, and just turn it to the other side. Probably caught up on a little bit on the other side, but get it moved. Swing it over. That way you don't have to mess up any other bark on the other side, and you have to touch that rack, and it's ready to go. I'm going to put the lid on in a minute, but first... We're going to get some wood chunks, guys, because what? We got to smoke it, right? Time to smoke it now. Take some little bit of cherry wood right there. Pop that in there. Take a little bit of oak right there. Pop that in there. I think that's good for right now. Get that closed right there and settled in. And that should be good for smoking. I'm going to have to adjust my vents at the bottom once I put my lid on. That way that heat can come down because it's probably got a little hot, I assume. And you're probably thinking the same thing. Get that lid on. Get your vents adjusted at the bottom. Get it adjusted at the top about halfway. And I think that's ready to go. And now you just pop a beer. Do whatever you want. And we wait. Alright guys, so I think we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and see what we got going on. I got my Dutch oven preheating right now because I want that liquid to start, you know, heating up by the time I put it in. And it's always good to have your pot preheated before you put your food in it. So I got my vegetables ready right there. And I got my wine ready to go. We're going to go ahead and get this opened up. I probably should already have this done. But I'm going to get my little rabbit on here in a minute. And then we're going to pop this cork right out of here so we can get ready to use this wine just like that. Go ahead and get that to the side. Go ahead and get your little bottle to the side. And then we're going to take, after these vegetables, or well, before the vegetables, guys, let's take some of this beef broth that we made out of the bouillon. And then we're going to pour that all in there. Be careful of the splatter. But, you know, I got a little residue there, but we'll fix that in a minute. 
take some of that salt, pepper, garlic, put that in there. Get some more seasoning in your Dutch oven and the liquid right there because we love seasoning. Then take your vegetables right there. We're going to pour about half of these vegetables in there. I got to get this lid out the way because it's, it's, it's causing problems. So just be careful. Flames coming up on the other side. Get about half of your vegetables on there. We want to make a good bed of vegetables. That way our meat can be comfortable and get ready to sleep in this Dutch oven for a couple of hours. Go ahead and lay your meat right there on top of that, just like that. And you know what? Don't worry, guys. We're going to have some more liquid in a minute. And we're going to fix that problem that is being, you know, it's a little shallow in there. So right now, we're going to take a little bit of this wine. You know, the rest of that bouillon I had in that measuring cup right there, we're going to fix that problem. We're going to get all that flavor. Put about a cup of that in there. And then take that, mix it around a little bit right there, and we're going to pour that all on the top of that meat. Get all that in there, and that'll give us a little more liquid than we need. And that'll be perfect in my eyes. You know, you don't, I don't have exact measurements except for the cups and stuff, but, you know, put as you want to until you feel comfortable. Now take the rest of these vegetables and put that all on the top of there and move some of them to the side and get right there in that liquid. Yeah, because we want to showcase that meat. So I'm going to push all this to the side. I'm going to get everything in there. Once all this cooks, you know, it's going to be perfect. Now, these vegetables are bare, so you know what we got to do. Once I get ready to move this pot over here, let's get it moved over, get it off that flame right there. We're going to control that heat in a minute once we put that top on. Yeah, there we go. Get some of that. Oh, lost some mushroom right there. That's okay. Let's get some of this, you know, this butter, garlic butter with this little jalapeno flavor in there. We got to get it on these vegetables. I want more flavor. This is going to be braising for a while. Get your top on there. It should be good to go. Put your lid on there. Get your temp set and let this joker roll. We're going to come out here in a minute. We're going to take a look at it and it should be good. All right, so let's take a look at it. Let's see what we got right here. Get this lid off right here. And you see that, that flame's going pretty good. Coals are real hot. Let's check the tenderness on this roast right here. It's bubbling, so that, that heat's going to come up, guys. Break it apart right there. It's not quite ready yet. So we're going to let this thing go for maybe another hour, hour and a half. It's It's been on here about two and a half hours, I would say. You don't have to check this that often because it's not going to burn. But I got my heat rolling about 300, 325 degrees. Put the lid back on it in a minute. We're going to come back out here. It should be done, and we should be ready to break it up by the time I see you again. All right, so I got the pot out right here, and let's look. Let's see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and pull it off. I know it's ready to go. Oh, man, look at that. That looks so good. I'm going to take a spoon, guys, and I'm going to show you how much, how tender that is. Look at that. Just breaks a part with a spoon. Look at that. Let's get some of these vegetables out. Let's get, uh, break some of that up right there. That looks so good. Look at, look at the meat, guys. A little bit of smoke you can see from that red right there. Wow. All right. So let's go ahead and get it played up. I got some I got some um, sides I made tonight. Get a couple potatoes and onions out. Right there. A couple more. Dig down in here. And these vegetables, they're tender. They just they just break apart. Look at this. This they're ready to go. I got some greens, some turnip and mustard greens we made. And I'm gonna get some of this meat out. Right here. Big old chunk right there. Put that right there. A little more. Oh man, look at that right there. And then just finish it off with your piece of cornbread. Right there. Put that right there. And that's it, guys. Let's get let's see if I can get a, a, a taste. Four. Real good. Ooh. All right. Mm -hmm. 
that's good real good hope you like the video you got your pie roast your vegetables you're all on the side cornbread way to finish off a night hope you enjoyed this video I hope y'all find something out of this that you can make on a Sunday Saturday whatever I prefer it on a weekend Till next time, toothpicks.